once I got the engagement of people mm -hmm. seeing that side of me, I started incorporating that with what I do every day, which is cutting hair. And once I was able to blend that together, that's when I found out that not a lot of barbers are doing skits. So I feel like that's what helped me stand out. And then it all comes down to, you know, like telling a story. I'm at the stage where I can create a character for myself in any of my videos. Yeah. And that's what will help you stand out. Millionaire didn't pay for his cut and did this instead. Hey, real, real quick. Yeah. Uh, I don't carry cash. Is there, you know, some way I can pay you something else? What? Like what? I cut stuff, bro. Uh, you got me a movie bag? Nah. Uh, all right, man, you're good to go. Alright, good looks, bro. Oh, bro, you want the full service? Yeah, yeah. Guys, it's 2023. If your barber don't do this for you, you need a new barber. Bro, why? No one took a video. Thanks What's for up, coming. Concerts. Thank you Welcome for having Academy, me. Man. Man. Thank you, bro. I know I seen you at the gym the last time, I think, at Sky Fitness. Yeah, or... Sky Fitness. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go. Didn't even know you lived in Brampton, mm -hmm. to be honest, but that's the Brampton that's boy. Thing. That's yeah. it. I got a lot of Brampton boys too, yeah. so that's dope. No, that's it. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, we're just going to be talking about how you built your personal brand. I chose you to be on this podcast because I see you really doing a lot of great content in the barbering world that is more towards like comedy stuff, which makes barbering look like it's like a fun atmosphere to be around. Exactly. If yeah. you want to share your story of who you are as a barber and where you came from and where you're at now mm. to the viewers, that'd be great. No, for sure. So uh, first things first, yo, France is a beautiful shot, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate but, um, it. Yeah, to get into it, uh, in the beginning, as any other barber, just starting from the basement, like cutting your boys, your family. For sure. And then just over time, I went to university. My parents didn't really let me pursue barbering at the time. Yeah. So I took a year to satisfy them. But even that year at university, like I was doing whatever I could to get into barbering. So I was doing like events at school and eventually like my parents knew that I was cutting hair more than studying. Yeah. And then, yeah, I ended up at Throne. So after my first year, I just dropped out and then I convinced my parents that I want to do barbering. Yeah. What were you taking? I was taking business. Business. Nice. So it was good. Yeah, yeah. It definitely helped me a little bit. Uh -huh, yeah. Like the marketing side of things, mm. like understanding like business admin and all that. Awesome. So yeah, I didn't yeah. go to waste for sure. Yeah, that's great, man. But um, yeah, fast forward, I always knew I wanted to cut hair full time. And then at the time I was looking for a shop and I reached out to JD and yeah, he put me on the team. And then ever since then, like from the beginning, from when I first started at Throne, yeah. I was still trying to figure it out. So I was uh -huh. just building my clientele. And then over time, fast forward now, like being in the industry for this many years, I think mm -hmm. it's eight or nine years now. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out like different avenues that will help separate me. Got you, yeah. And I feel like that's how it happened with the content stuff. That's awesome, man. Good for yeah. you, man. Yeah, you, so you started when JD, you guys had thrown on like Young and, was it Young and Gerard or Young area, right? Young yeah. and Gerard, yeah. yeah. How long ago was that? Since that was maybe thrown? 20, oh, when I first started that Yeah, when we first 2016, started. 17. Nice, you guys came a long way. And I, I haven't been to your guys' new shop. I look, it was yeah. beautiful too. No, I've seen the yeah. stuff. And you guys are showcasing a lot of content, clothing. You guys have everything mm. going on there, which it's is like great. It's like a space over there, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's nice. It. So what do you guys do at Throne right now in your space? I I know it's like a barber shop, but you guys have a vintage clothing and then mm -hmm. and then you guys do events like pop-ups and stuff like yeah so essentially it's mostly like an event space okay. so I guess like the main goal was to bring the community together and just have a space for everyone to just collaborate in. I love that yeah. But right now there's no more vintage store, there's no more okay. there yeah. used to be physio but yeah no more so cool. yeah. It's just thrown, thrown barbershop mm, right now. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do appointments or just you do a walk-in still? Me personally, all of us at the shop, we just do appointment only. Okay. And I yeah. feel like it's easier like that. So definitely appointment only. But if a walk-in comes, then obviously yeah. if there's space. How has personal, bar personal branding played a role in your own journey as a barber? And what impact has it had on your career and the way clients perceive you? Okay, I would say personal branding is really important. And I feel like any other barber, in general, even including you, and I see what you've done with Cadman. Thank you, yeah. And it's definitely inspiring, like you're Thank leading you. into like different mm -hmm. lanes. And I feel like that's what every entrepreneur should do, not just stick into one type of environment. I agree, You yeah. should definitely like branch off to other things. Mm -hmm. And me personally, I just knew that I didn't always want to cut hair. And I was trying to figure out other outlets that I can do to like give me more money. Yeah, for sure. Um, give me more clients and just give me more business overall. Gotcha. And ever since I started the content, it's just, mm -hmm. bro, personal branding is everything. Yeah, I know. It's great. It's, it's really important. And I feel if any barbers watching this, you definitely got to take into consideration how you represent yourself, especially online, because mm -hmm. it's such like a, a social media is like, tool. it's powerful. Yeah. And you're reaching out to a lot of people that you don't even know. 
and you're oh, engaging with people. Yeah. I, I've been following your Instagram page for a while. I, I see your stories and sometimes I, I think a couple weeks ago or a month ago, I seen someone posted in Russia or somewhere in Europe. Yeah. And they did, they reposted your thing that you posted. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was like the comedy thing with the cape with the bra. With the bra. Yeah. So that yeah. went viral. Exactly. Yeah. And that, yeah. that attention, even though it's, it's related with barbering, but it's yeah. like a joke thing. Like sometimes people, I think I need to understand that yeah. you can have fun doing what you love. Exactly. You don't have to exactly. be serious about it. Yeah. And that's what I find in you. A mm -hmm. lot of the content you share, there's a lot of humor behind it mm -hmm. jokes. Whereas mm -hmm. like sometimes with the barbering world, it's seen to be too, too serious, serious exactly. too much drama, too much yeah. hate, too much... Because mm -hmm. we know Toronto, it's always been that city. A lot of people don't want to see yeah. another person do well. Or, there's or a lot of... just win in general. Exactly. Yeah. So, no, it's great what you're doing that, and I love yeah. that. What advice do you have for aspiring barbers who are looking to identify their unique brand identity? And how did you go about discovering and defining your own brand as a barber? One thing I would say is the main thing I would put out there is to just be yourself, mm -hmm. be unique and just don't be someone you're not. And me personally, like that's helped a long way mm -hmm. because growing up in the barber industry, I tried to put up front, like I always mm -hmm. tried to act serious because yeah. that's what I thought the barbering industry yeah, was. Yeah. Like just posting a haircut, doing those videos of you doing a nice skin fit, yeah, yeah, yeah. making it look cool. It's a show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a show, like yeah. a movie. That's yeah. what I was always about back yeah. then. And then just over time, um, you know, like TikTok, Mm -hmm. TikTok came out and that's yeah. how it started for me. And then I realized once you blend your personality with what you do, yeah. I feel like that's what will what make you stand out yeah. to the public. That's you know what I mean? Cause you, yeah. Because like you're that. not just cutting hair, you're, you're blending your personality. Mm -hmm. And when people see like your true colors and like how you are as a person, I feel like that's what makes you so authentic. Yeah. And that relates to your brand overall, mm -hmm. right? Because like you're not just like the rest of them, you're not just not in a rude way. Yeah, I mean, no, like for you're, sure. Yeah, like yeah. You're standing out from the rest, but that's mm. essentially what you want. Like you got to start doing some stuff that's not really like common. Yeah, that's a great statement. It's definitely helped mm. a lot. You say I'm hitting the likes, the views, mm -hmm. and like it's a humbling experience. Like I'm forever yeah. grateful for all the views I'm hitting, all the viral videos I'm hitting. But at the end of the day, it's I'm not being someone I'm not. Yeah. I'm just being me, and that's it's just it. yeah. it's just grateful to know that yeah, that's absolutely. the outcome of it. And I think what's great about it is like, you're creating a story in mm -hmm. your social platform. I think it's about like, when I look at your page, it's like, there's a story and a lot of humor, mm -hmm. like I mentioned, but there's a story that you're creating for each segment of like oh, your, a good point. Your, your jokes, yeah. videos, right? Yeah, exactly. Which is still related to barbering. Cause it's like, these are common things that yeah. people are going in and out of your chair. On I think day. that, yeah, that's a good point. Like, I feel like, you know, when you, when it comes to making content, yeah, you have to tell a story. Yeah, and I feel like you know I was able to do that with like <laughs> making comedy. Listen, I sure. I was in mind a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. I met this artist over there who has a good following out there, and he's pretty big out there. Mm -hmm. He's he gets a lot of I ask him like, how do you deal with all the hate, the comments, and stuff that saying mm -hmm. your your art is like so easy, anyone could do that. Because right? mm -hmm. all he did was like pretty much he's known for splattering paint everywhere, and it seems see. easy, right? But it's crazy how he took it in. And when I asked him, I'm like, how do you deal with the comments where people are like, yo, I could mm. do that too. Why are you charging that much? And why are you doing this? But yeah. at the end of the day, he values his worth. And he also explains that envy, jealousy, and hate is another representation of love. So if someone's coming on your mm -hmm. page and giving your, the time and energy to hate or be jealous, no matter what, whatever you post and you're telling me like you're authentic to the fullest and you, this is what you're about like this is who you are as the humor part as mm -hmm. the barber part as a storytelling part that's just like what you're creating like, it's your own story and if you're authentic there's no reason for you to feel like hurt by somebody else's comments or negativity because exactly yeah. you're doing what you love and you're doing what you're doing yeah. it, it doesn't matter yeah yeah Mm -hmm. And it's also how you react to it, right? Yeah, it's true. Sure. I know it's hard like mm -hmm. back in the day when someone used to comment or say, it's like, yeah. how do you deal with that comment? I don't know how you would deal with some of the comments, but it's like very vicious. Mm -hmm. Do you block and delete or do you leave it on no, the no, comments? I leave it there. I leave it there. You let it, you leave yeah, it I leave that there. Because yeah. Yeah. when people see that, yeah, yeah. they'll even know for themselves that it's not that yeah, serious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's always not that serious uh -huh, yeah. for someone to show hate. But It's true, yeah. And it's just, at the end of the day, it's just, bro, they're still watching my yeah, stuff. Exactly. Right? So that's all I can ask for. And yeah. if I react, yeah. if I do react, then that's what they want. Absolutely. So yeah. if I don't react, yeah. then that just means that 
I'm just gonna sure. keep, keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. I like your head on your shoulders. Type yeah, you have thing. to. Yeah. Very straightforward. This is great. Yeah, especially the content that I'm making. Like I yeah. had to have that thick of a skin on the internet because I don't even know who's watching my videos. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Especially with the views. So yeah, this day and age, man, like it, it's crazy. Like how we could be so exposed now mm -hmm. to the world, whatever we post. You don't show too much about family or relatives or anything. You keep that a little mm -hmm. bit outside. Maybe you'll show Maybe your my stories here yeah. and there, but not, yeah. not everything. Yeah, not, not everything. everything, which I yeah. think is important in, in social media and Instagram sure. nowadays. Like, Yes. I have kids. I don't even want to show my kids. You know what I mean? Especially like AI and everything. Yeah, you see those things too. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's scary. It's scary. So you watch basically yeah, say the for sure. it's yeah. scary out here, man. Yeah, but at the same time, I think with the digital world and social media, mm -hmm. it's all about adapting, right? And, and adapting to the times because you don't want to be that barber that's cutting hair, like dog eat dog barber shop, and you're everyone's just trying to snatch clients and be like, "Yo, that guy's mine." Now we're that past was, that. We're you're past, past that. that. Yeah, yeah. Like professionalism, appointments, being happy yeah. in, in the atmosphere you're in, that's super important. Yeah, I would right? say now everything is like clockwork, uh, just yeah. straight professional, mm -hmm. just take care of your people, take care of your clients, Absolutely. take yeah. care of yourself and mm -hmm. that's it. And do you get to the travel? Like what do you like to do for fun? Well, that's my goal right now. I'm definitely trying to travel now. Amazing. I want to experience like what else is out there. Yeah. And I just feel like personally and just in general, I just feel like we all got to get out of Toronto. Yeah. Because yeah. Toronto's so small, right? Yeah. And I just feel like there's more stuff out mm -hmm. there. So I definitely want to experience traveling. For sure, yeah. Yeah. It definitely, I've traveled a lot in my fair share mm -hmm. of my time. And I think with travel brings a lot more like experience and wisdom, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes when you're in a different place, you see your perception of like your life here in Toronto and how you live. But you don't really see that when you're living here. Exactly. So you, yeah. From a different view, you're, you get to see it. And I think that's where it's the most valuable. And I think that's why a lot of people say money will always be money, right? But real wealth is like being able to experience certain things and you're not going to regret when you're in your deathbed or when you're exactly. older. Because you can't yeah. do a lot of the things when you're older. Yeah, so you only have one life, man. One life to live. One that's life. it, man. We got to exactly. live it to the best. Right? But like once I started learning that wow. mindset of having one life, wow. I feel like that's what really got me on my toes and said, yo, I got to start doing something, man. That's amazing. And my advice to you as yeah. well, I see where you're going with you want to travel and do things. Mm -hmm. I always yeah. look at it as there's a bigger sandbox in Toronto. America has a lot of, there's a lot of people. If you're playing a bigger sandbox, you'll get probably get more attention. Exactly, you know, yeah. In being in certain states and countries. Yeah, you wanna know something crazy? What? Like when I look at my stats on my content, yeah. bro, all my viewers are from the States, UK, yeah. and Canada's the lowest. So yeah. it's, it's just crazy, man. So it would be definitely nice to yeah. branch off out there. Yeah, you should. I feel like, yeah. Cause you're young still too, right? I, I believe that you need to go out there and continue doing content mm. and what you're doing. Network with the right people that yeah. have probably bigger or better followers than you, people that are bigger in the game. Yeah. That's the thing. In life, you want to be around people that are higher than you. So you exactly. get to a higher level. Yeah. If you're always around the same level people, you know, you're not going to grow. And mm. I've learned that in my career as a barber, I've always tried to put myself in a position with great people that are doing big things and it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be about barbering it could be around anything because i'm more to geared towards like entrepreneurship i've always been like getting myself into different things which mm -hmm. i enjoy and connecting with like-minded people right mm -hmm. and i find that you're very similar but you just need to take the action and exactly, experience that yeah. for yourself right yeah. and have you traveled around the world or just like vacations, yeah, resorts, nice, um, yeah, states, New York, just like quick trips. Got you. Got Nothing you. to like, like network, but yeah, that's yeah, definitely yeah. what I want to do now. Like travel just to meet mm. new people and just for sure, yeah, put myself out there. Can you share a personal experience that showcases the power of effective personal branding in the barbering industry? How did it help you stand out and connect with your target audience? It comes down to like I said before, just mm -hmm. being you. Yeah. And in the beginning, a lot of people thought I was just like serious, like just cutting hair, just being mm -hmm. a regular barber. But bro, once I started shaking my ass on that, yeah. it was a game changer. Yeah. And like, even to this day, like that's where it started. And yeah. once I got the engagement of people mm -hmm. seeing that side of me, I started incorporating that with what I do every day, which is cutting hair. And once I was able to blend that together, that's when I found out, hey, like we can do skits. Yeah. And then once I started doing the skits, not a lot of barbers are doing skits. So I feel like that's what helped me stand out. And then it all comes down to like telling a story. And like the person that I put myself out there in the videos, it's literally telling a story, right? And mm. I feel like I'm at the stage where I can create a character for myself in any of my videos. Yeah. 
and that's what will help you stand out. That's great. Yeah. And like, for example, like in the skits, I would say something very repetitive. And then when I see someone in public, yeah, like they would they just look at me. Right? Exactly. Yeah, I got that's you. one of them. Yeah. That was like a big one. Every time someone saw me yeah. in public, like they would say that to me. Yeah. And it just goes to show that once you have that audience, like they'll rock with you. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like an ad, like a, a McDonald's exactly. ad. Like exactly. I'm loving it. Yeah. But then it's like, you have your own way of branding yourself. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I seen those videos too. It's really funny. Mm -hmm. Like some I, of the videos. I'm not gonna lie, it's definitely cringe. Like it could be cringe. It's, it's but definitely I, cringe, but that was my goal to make it cringe. Yeah. Oh, you, you actually made. Okay. Well, like it's natural though. It's natural. Yeah, yeah, Nothing's yeah. fake. It's just like when I watch it myself personally, yeah. I hate watching myself. Yeah, it, it's different. I think that's like a thing with every human being. It's you want to be better. You want to like. It's like that's me. Yeah, exactly. We're hard on ourselves sometimes. Where we're just mm -hmm. like, nah, man, like, that's weird. That's weird. Yeah. I could have done this better. I should have yeah. done that. We always think about things exactly, too much. Yeah. That yeah. when you think about things too much, that's when it like just goes down. Yeah. So I yeah. learned that if I just put it out there, mm -hmm. see how it goes. Yeah. It will just yeah, take yeah. the wheel, and that's what it did. Like it the worked, audience, yeah. yeah, it worked, man. Like a lot of people are laughing, so yeah, I know I'm at least doing something right. Yeah, yeah, you are. You could always go back to those videos that you created. And it makes, it's like, at least you get to make people laugh. You know what exactly. I mean? And I think that's so important to yeah. this world because not a lot of people are laughing these days. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> this society right yeah. now, I think, I don't know, I've had many clients in the past couple months going through a lot of anxiety issues mm -hmm. in life, financial, with inflation. Yeah. We know how it is in Toronto. It's expensive. It's a lot of problems and issues the city's facing. And mm -hmm. sometimes in a barber shop, we get to feel when someone sits in the chair, what they're going through. And I don't know about you, but there's been a lot of people going through things in life that sometimes they need to just laugh things off and be like, hey, life is good. We will get through this. Exactly. Like, be positive. Yeah. Don't dwell. Don't get stuck in the news where there's so much negativity and, and, and all this negative stuff. Yeah. There has to, it's been bad lately. Yeah. I but, feel like yeah. that's a good blessing that us barbers mm -hmm. have, right? Like we yeah. talk to our clients and like we make them feel mm -hmm. better and vice versa. Like we learn from them. Yeah. And like giving that value of entertainment to my clients For has sure. definitely helped me attain like a, like an efficient clientele. Yeah. Like loyal clientele especially. For sure. Yeah. So that's no, great. It's a blessing. And I know sometimes when you're like, if you were like a guy, cause I'm a joker too. I have a lot of people that know me personally, like yeah. I'm a joker type of guy too. So. I know you are. Man. Yeah, I but you I, are. I don't, yeah. I also have to be professional yeah. when I'm out and yeah, exactly, you know? yeah. but it's funny cause sometimes you yourself as being a joker, some people treat you like you're a joker and they could take things a little too far mm -hmm. and press your buttons. Yeah. So it, it depends who yeah. you are and exactly. what you're trying to do. Yeah. Like, it could be too much sometimes. Yeah. And I'm sure you no, there's have experience. Yeah. There's a boundary. There's a boundary, yeah. yeah. I definitely set a boundary with like yeah, my yeah. stuff. Like one day like I'll post like like kind of like a tranchy video. Yeah. And then I'll get some type of certain reaction. Yeah. And then once I get that, I'll balance it out with maybe like a serious type of skit. Yeah. Just to make people know that there's a certain cap to things. That's I don't want to be known just as like someone that does some wild stuff on yeah, the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once I started balancing it, that was mm -hmm. definitely like a that's learned, good. So yeah. You, yeah, you balance both worlds. You definitely so got to like, balance it. Yeah. Because it's not overly extreme yeah. where it's, yo, this is what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm about. I'm always going to be like this, but that's yeah. not who you are. You're, exactly. Because yeah. I find like your vibe here in the podcast, you're very like chill. You're very mellow. You're just, mm -hmm. you're not like, but then there's parts of you where you have that humor. Yeah. But I think that's in a lot of Filipinos. It's like the yeah. Filipino humor. You I think so with. too. I think so yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. And were you born here or you were born back in Philippines? I was born here. How old are you? I'm going to be 36 Jeez. two weeks from now. Yeah. Damn, 10 I'm years old. older than me. Man. Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, yo, you look, I yeah. thought you were like 28, 29. No, I get that a lot. Yeah. J JD is what, 33? He's probably a year or two years younger than me. Yeah, a couple years younger than yeah. me. I think he just turned 30, I think. Oh, he's still young too. Yeah. Then. Wow, that's good. Yeah. You guys are doing big things too. No, we're trying, we're trying. Yeah, I see Jay working hard too, so yeah. appreciate mm -hmm. his hustle. I love no, seeing good. people work hard to... Yeah. The thing is with me too, I wanna, when someone gets to a certain level and we're, you know, you always know there was a path they took and struggles to get there. For sure. And that's where I respect a lot of people because a lot of people could hate on people doing big things, but they're not there yet. They haven't worked to get there. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why people are at a high level, right? Mm -hmm. So Because they don't see the work that they put in. Yeah, like you know how it is in the barber industry. Like you look up to people. Yeah. And yeah, like I definitely wanted to give my flowers to like, you know, you. 
Yeah. Um, Rocky, you. JD, obviously, Brian, yeah. um, some of the OG guys mm -hmm. in the industry, like Vince and all them. Yeah, yeah. Like, for example, like you guys look up to Vince, Rich the Barber, maybe. Yeah, I yeah, don't know I if know you Rich. Do. Yeah, I met Rich in New York, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. he's big you know, too. So you definitely have the inspiration. Thank you. know what I mean? I like, um, no, like, just in general, like you, you may look up to those guys in the industry mm -hmm. and like people like me from my generation, like we definitely look up to you guys. Appreciate you, man. And yeah. I feel like going forward, that's what I'm trying to do for like the, the generation coming up. I love that. Yeah. And I just feel like, like it should just be like a domino effect. Yeah, as it and, should. Yeah. yeah. Anything, questions you have for anytime you need help or whatever, mm -hmm. like I'm an open book. Yeah. I generally like like meeting people like the way I work because I'm more old school. If I meet you and I yeah. vibe with you, I can yeah. I build relationships. Everything on social media is more of it's very hard to decide who the, a person is through exactly, you know, their yeah. phone, right? Because a yeah. lot of people could be someone they're not. And mm -hmm. until I find out, until you meet the person one on one, yeah, it's a different bond. It's a different relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And no, but you're. I think I probably bumped into you probably a couple times in like barber career. shows. Yeah, maybe? barber shows. Yeah. Were you at the one at the recent one with Rob? I was there. I yeah, was yeah. There. yeah. I think I saw you there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you still comp you're competing or doing anything? Oh, uh, to be honest, bro, you know, I, I don't really find it. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just yeah. feel like. I'm the same way, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not really focused on that, but definitely yeah. for the barber coming yeah, yeah. up, it's definitely good exposure. Of course. But yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm past that, but I'm not mm -hmm. dissing them. Like it's, yeah, of course. It's a good, it's a good opportunity yeah. to put yourself out there, but personally, I just mm -hmm. want to focus on the business, the brand, and yeah. just try to get to that next level. That's great, yeah. Yeah. And what are your, what's the future looking for you in the next five years? What are you looking to do? Next five in years? Your career? Like, where do you want to see yourself? Because you're 20, you're only 25 now, mm -hmm. when you're 30, like, I just want to cut hair for fun. Yeah. That's definitely the goal. And going forward, I'm just hoping that the content stuff pays off. Yeah. And it gets me to the point where, you know, like I can just have my loyal clients and just cut whenever I want. I can travel. I definitely want to have my own property, my own car, and just be comfortable. Yeah, that's you know great. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't really care about, I hate the word, but like, I don't really care about like the clout stuff, mm -hmm. like cutting celebrities, all that mm -hmm. stuff is, it's just, it's rewards at the end of the day. Yeah. But personally, I just want, comfortability and just being able to support my people that's great man. in a way where i can travel and just do what i want to do and not just be behind the chair yeah i think if you continue doing the digital stuff the online mm -hmm. stuff because with your presence and build off that i yeah. definitely see that happening no next, thank you, know. you bro yeah i'm you trying to definitely do that 25 years man like i just feel like now is game time for yeah me. When I was 25, that was when I took 25 to 30 was more of my serious years where I'm like, okay, I'm going to stop partying, stop going too crazy. That's more of the serious stage because you can't take those like five years lightly. Cause once you hit 30, it's like, you're probably going to want to maybe get married, have kids, your exactly. parents are getting older. You got to take care of them. There's a lot more responsibility in that realm, yeah. but that's great. So collaboration and partnerships can be valuable for barber branding. Have you had any successful collaborations or partnerships that have enhanced your brand presence? And how did you go about identifying and nurturing those relationships? Collaborations is definitely important, especially mm -hmm. being a barber and not even barber, but like entrepreneur. Yeah. I definitely feel like it's very important to meet new people, work with new people. And this right now, like we're collabing right now. Yeah. And like, I'm actually talking to you for the first time face to face. Yeah. And I see that as a very informative collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this will go a long way, like for me personally. And yeah, just in general, man, collabing with people personally is definitely helped because like, for example, this one guy that I do videos with, he has a big, like, following just off doing comedy. Yeah. And I was able to collaborate with him. So now his audience sees my work and vice versa. And I feel like that's just what we got to do, man. Like, we just got to put ourselves out there. Yeah. And once you have those collaborations, it's just like a forever relationship type of thing. Yeah. Like, they got your back, you got their back. Exactly. And, yeah, collaborations. I like man. that. I like that. Yeah, collaborations, like... Everyone's eating type of thing. Like it's engagement. Their followers, your followers, and if it's like it, it really puts you on the map, including if you're like dealing with the right mm -hmm. collaborator, right? Like yeah, the, I feel like it just takes one person to see your work. So that's definitely a big thing. Like the world is so big, and once that one person is able to see your work, I feel like it's just sky's the limit from there. Oh yeah, for sure. And like for example, like with a viral video, like not everyone has a recipe for a viral video, but when you least expect it, I feel like that's when it happens. Yeah. And you can't really chase that. Yeah, when you're working with people that <laughs> have a good audience, yeah. It definitely just brings you more attention. Yeah. And yeah, like I've done a lot of collaborations with a lot of 
comedians, mm -hmm. not just barbers. I feel like I was trying to, I was trying to chase not just barbers, but maybe like people that do comedy. Yeah. And I was able to do that with shout out certified. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out Bilal. He's a comedy hey, guy. I see and those guys. Yeah. Those recording. guys. Yeah. They're killing it, man. Yeah. And like those relationships. Yeah. Bro, I cherish that the most because like when people see you work with those types of people, it's, yeah. bro, it's different, man. Yeah, it's but different. I'm like, yo, I'm forever grateful for that. That's dope. Shout out to them. Yeah, certified to them. in Bilal. Yeah, certified Bilal. Six buzz, I've seen him. Yeah. Six buzz yeah. a lot. He's a joker. Yeah. Like even with Bilal, like I didn't know him. I just yeah. reached out to him. Yeah. And that's the power of social media, man. Yeah. Like, all it takes is one message. And then that's, that's just crazy. how it works. Yeah. It's, like it's funny, chain. like dealing with comedians, or sometimes you never know yeah. who you're gonna meet. But yeah. you know, sometimes not having the balls to just like message them. Don't they're mm -hmm. all humans too. Exactly. Like, yeah. Feel free to message people. Like sometimes people put fear behind their. Mm -hmm. in the, it's okay if someone says no. Yeah, you're just like, gonna shoot your shot. You gotta shoot your shot. Exactly. Right? It was crazy because like, um, I was in Florida two weeks ago, and then yeah. my other homie in Miami connected with. Tonio. Skit. Tonio, he's like a Wild and Out Wednesday. Skit guy? Yeah, yeah, that okay, guy. He's okay. a funny guy too. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know who he was yeah. until like he came in and it's like, sometimes everyone's just like normal. Everyone's just human mm. being. Everyone's yeah. just like themselves. Yeah. Like, I think Not. sometimes we put in our head or some people put in their head like this guy's like God or something. Some people could think someone's like bigger or better, but yeah. we're all like pretty much the same. Like we always have this perception of certain people, but once you like meet them, it's yeah. Well, they're just like us. Like yeah. they're trying to figure it out just yeah. as much as we are. You mentioned certified and then Bilal, like two really good comedians known in Instagram, social media, yeah. good followers. They obviously engage their followers with their barber, which is you, or whether it was a skit, whatever it was, exactly. it's yeah. still, you got that engagement yeah. and the viewers that you know, as a barber, you only have yeah. so many viewers, maybe your clients or the yeah. shop community. Exactly. You're like not reaching out to another platform. You're reaching like a wider audience yeah, and yeah. not just barbers and clients. Yeah. And that was definitely my goal, but I definitely can't forget a shout out Throne, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like for them giving me a platform to just showcase yeah, what I'm doing. Throne has been a well-known shop for a long yeah. time. I remember GQ before GQ, we used to bump into like mm -hmm. Throne at different events and stuff. Mm -hmm. like JD, RJ, shout out to RJ. Yeah, shout out to RJ. Um, who else is there? There's, a, there's been a bunch yeah. of guys in Throne. It's that's the East End, yeah. downtown. Barbers. Yeah. Plus, we were more at West End. It wasn't soccer. a lot of barbers like in the West End, right? No, like we were running the West End, GQ, yeah. Cadman, yeah. a lot of. But then you know what? There's a lot of barber shops in the West End, including where I started here on Terran Dundas. I used to work at DMR. So shout out to Randy, Brooklyn. I was with Brooklyn in Miami. He actually was one of the first barbers that I looked up to, including Maurice, who's uh, a pilot now. So from a barber wow. to a pilot. It's crazy. Uh, these guys have been my inspiration and got me into the game early. They always looked out for me. I was like a younger brother to them, but I'm happy for all three of them because all three of them have all three different types of lives, mm. but they all are doing the things they love, which makes me happy because I think when you see people that you grow with and you're around, yeah, it's motivating, it's, it's motivating yeah. to see them successful because yeah. you're around that and who wants to, no, hear about a barber that you grew up with or you looked up to being in a rough position. No one mm -hmm. wants to, you must be sick if you think like, yeah, fuck that guy's homeless now. Like, yeah, no crazy. one wants to hear that yeah. shit, man. Like, right. yeah. <laughs> unless you I really would, hate them. No, for sure. Like yeah. even coming out from Brampton, Yeah, it's just crazy how like I ended up in the city and it's just eye opening because it's different, it's different sceneries. Yeah. And, like coming from the West End, you're just like cutting your boys and like, Mm -hmm. I wasn't really exposed to a lot of shops out in Brampton. Yeah. So for me to see the atmosphere in the city is, bro, it's different. It is different, it's yeah. It's very different, but it's, it's paved the way. Like I definitely yeah. learned and you're not just providing that service. You're, of course, yeah. You're accommodating to the client. You got to do everything. Yeah. It's all the details and like those people in the city, they, they pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, yeah they do. They so, so yeah, what would you say like being a barber in the city? Mm -hmm. Name three things that if a client were to come to you, there's a reason why they come back to you. Trust. Trust, yeah. Efficiency uh -huh. and like always available and just bringing value to that 
to that service appointment. Yeah. Which in my case is definitely entertainment. Yeah. And just, yeah, just always staying available. That's one thing I definitely learned. Yeah. We so definitely... do you squeeze people in, would you yeah, say? Yeah, I try to. That's yeah. good, yeah. yeah. So you work hard to yeah. take. No, I have to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If I'm traveling from Brampton to the city, I always got to make my time worth it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel if I come to the shop and I only have one or two appointments booked, that's how I know I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. And But like the content, it's paid off fully. Oh, yeah. Every time I pull up to the shop, it's uh -huh. always fully booked. So that's amazing. I'm grateful yeah. for that. Do you still enjoy barbering, like to the fullest? No, of course, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah okay, it's, okay. it's definitely like my roots. Yeah. And I always want to cut yeah. hair, but you know, just like you, I don't want to be just, behind the chair forever. Yeah. I want to be able to have a family. Yeah. Do have other a house, things, do yeah. other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the wear and tear in barbering. Yeah. You're standing up all you, day. You, you definitely reach a cap, I would say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you do feel it too. Yeah. Like, like you've been like driven off, right? Yeah, like I, I used to cut average 20 to 30 people a day. It's crazy. And then now I'm only cutting like eight, yeah. eight to 10, 10 that's, at most. That's what you would want though. Yeah, but quality yeah. people, quality clients, mm -hmm. you gotta know your worth. So mm -hmm. you gotta charge what you know sure. your worth. And then... Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, like worth is a big thing. Yeah. And for you to, persuade someone to pay your price. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the hardest part of being a barber. Yeah, understanding your worth. Obviously mm -hmm. you cannot charge something like your quality is garbage and you're a new barber and you're trying to charge to make money. That's just mm -hmm. selfish and stupid to charge that in the beginning. I think you need to build credibility and experience and keep educating yourself into charging what you believe you're worth, right? So obviously I think the more knowledgeable you are and the more skilled if you're on that mindset never stop learning type of mindset and you're just going out there cutting all texture of hair you're hustling like you put in that work you should be a valued at what you believe like i i charge starting right now like 120 for an hour i charge for mm -hmm. my time yeah. 120 is just base shop price should be more than that for you yeah know. exactly yeah. but i'm still and a lot of people say that to me too mm -hmm. don't get me wrong now I think I'm transitioning myself over to more of like I'm coming out again because mm -hmm. I, I slowed down with my content social media. Now I want to do stuff like this. This is what I enjoy like mm -hmm. talking to other like-minded entrepreneurs, barbershop owners, barbershop, whatever it is, consulting, whatever it is to do with barbering. Mm -hmm. I want to be heavily involved in the game because this is the, my roots too. Exactly. You know, starting yeah. at 15, cutting my garage, cutting everyone in my high school, cutting everyone in my college. I actually went to Humber College and I took fitness and health promotion. So I was always oh, in the fitness so world. Easy, yeah, I try, bro, I try. Yeah, you're gonna get that. I see your boys with the, my brother's boy, Chris. Chris. I met Chris. him a couple of times at the gym. I think he did a couple Chris. of videos. Oh, Chris Medina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he no, seems yeah. like he's a, he he's came a, a long guy. way too. Yeah, he yeah. seemed legit. No, he was telling me about his journey, yeah. Yeah, it's good, yeah, man. Shout out to Chris, man. Shout out to Chris, yeah. man. Yeah, it's good to see those are the people mm -hmm. like, that achieved it, you have to learn how they achieved it. And I exactly, find like, yeah. that's inspirational, right? Mm -hmm. Like people don't want to hear people with excuses. They want to see results. Yeah. And I yeah. think in fact, this day and age, like mm -hmm. people want results right away, but yeah. it's chipping yeah, away. It's exactly. Yeah. Like, even with the price thing, like people want to charge what you charge, but they can't just jump into that. Right? Yeah. You got to work themselves up. Yeah. 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 But I've heard some barbers actually through, I teach a lot of classes still like one-on-one -on -one classes and on our online course. We get a lot of people that tell me like, hey, you know, I go, there's this barber that charges a hundred dollars at home and he's just, he's only 18, 19 year old and people are paying a hundred dollars to see him and his cuts are not that bad. But at the same time, I'm like, sometimes I'm like, hey man, like if you could charge that and you're getting paid that much and people keep coming back. Exactly. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah. But if you're charging and then like, you're just like destroying people's hair and it's not working, like you're just selling mm -hmm. that, like that's not really yeah. an ethical way of doing business, right? If it works though, but yeah. you're right though. Like some people take advantage of that Yeah. and they don't even put love into the craft. Yeah. It's definitely making the industry like look bad. Yeah. I yeah, would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I still believe that I think the barber prices should be up higher because inflation, <laughs> cost of living, has gone up yeah. substantially and For sure. we need to know our worth and we need to be charging what we need to look at hairstylists they charge mm -hmm. like Bro, they charge a couple hundred dollars it just takes that loyal clientele to yeah. support you they gotta really respect and honor what you charge it is hard to come across like those type of people because nowadays too like you're in competition with a lot of different barbers too there's mm -hmm. a lot of barbers out there that are great a too lot. that could charge cheap, lower than you yeah. so why would they go to a barber that costs more yeah. where they can almost get the same experience and same cut and some 
So it's it's very it, the competition got higher with the barber world and the GTA. Yeah. It ain't the same like how it used to be, mm -hmm. right? I would definitely say like you don't want those clients though. The very ones true, that yeah. want to pay less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they want to compare, yeah, just you brand yourself as like a comedian slash barber skit yeah. TikTok. That's getting a lot of engagement, mm -hmm. which is so powerful. It's mm -hmm. great and it works well. It fits yeah. who you are. You're right. We overthink sometimes. And sometimes we just got to do it, like you said earlier. We just got to do it, yeah. But sometimes we're in our head. We're like, yeah. yo, this is that's not me, bro. That's yeah. too cringe. That's yeah. too much. But then you did it. You made it happen. And mm -hmm. look what it brought you. It brought you a lot of flowers. You was you no, know? nah, thank you, bro. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say, like, I got the flowers yet, though. <laughs> it's coming. No, nah, thank you, bro. I definitely yeah. feel it. Hey, but yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm trying to get to that. Right now, I feel like I'm here. Yeah. But I'm trying to get to that, mm -hmm. that next one. Yeah. And that's where I'm stuck at right now. What's the next one for you? The next one, like the next step. Yeah. I want to get paid off the videos. That's great. I want to so get monetized. You started YouTube? Yeah. So it's crazy because everything that I'm posting on TikTok, mm. Instagram Reels, yeah. I just started up my YouTube. Amazing. I'm literally posting every day, like throwing up my Reels and TikToks onto shorts. That's dope. Yeah. And yo, I'm about to hit like 10,000 yeah. subscribers, what? man. And what's so. your uh, YouTube? So everyone could follow you on YouTube. Everything Adreezy cuts. Everything Adreezy cuts. Yeah, go follow Adreezy. Yeah. Everything Adreezy cuts yeah, on shout YouTube. Shout out Adreezy. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> to that guy. It's just it's nice because you have all platforms. Yeah. And I feel like just anyone in general, like even you, mm -hmm. what you're doing with Cadman, I feel like going on every social platform is very important because yeah. you know it's powerful and it is, like all yeah. it takes is one one video to pop off. Yeah. And that's what it is. Yeah, but, absolutely. But personally, and like I'm trying to get that monetization, like ad deals, yeah, like brand ambassadorship, everything. Do it, man. You should be getting paid for your viewers and your subscription. I know the subscriptions because this is a full-time job too. What we're doing yeah. here is sitting down in this podcast, like it's our time. Yeah, it's our, our time. Our time exactly. is valuable. Yeah. When we get out of our time, we can't get back. So we better get something out of this podcast. Yeah, we will, we will. We will. Like but anyone watching this would definitely learn something. Absolutely. Like it's something that me and you will never forget. Exactly. Like, yeah. I don't know where I'll be at five years. Yeah. You're same way you. You're in your mansion, bro, in LA. Nah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. That'd be crazy. <laughs> Who's else you going to be yeah. like Chris Who's Brown, eh? yeah, That'd be crazy. Chris Breezy and yeah. Adreezy together. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be crazy. Man. Yes, sir. Yeah. So how do you utilize client testimonials and positive reviews to strengthen your personal brand as a barber? And can you share a specific instance where client feedback has had a significant impact on your brand reputation? Client feedback is bro, it's crucial. I feel being a barber, if your clients are coming back to you, that means you're doing something right. And like it comes down to client reviews for your shop. That's a big thing I learned coming up as a barber. Yeah. I would definitely say utilize Google reviews because Google reviews is the first place a new customer would come to. Yeah, yeah. And not a lot of barbers know that. Like they think yeah, it's just they Instagram, they, they, it's they like, really don't. Yeah. But if you really, like your clients to write up a quick review, mm. just shout you out, say your name, any new customer that comes into your shop, they'll see that, Yeah. you absolutely. know what I mean? And that's what gives you returning clients, new clients. And I'm like, I'm lucky that I was able to learn that mm. like, coming into the city because like a guy like me coming out of Brampton, I didn't have clients. Yeah. So I definitely had to build a clientele base but you know, like once people give you a review, it's just a chain effect. A lot of people will start coming to you. Yeah. And that's how you build up yourself as like getting a loyal clientele base. That's what's up. And when it comes to, that's just like being behind the chair. And when it comes to your business, like your personal brand, bro, like what your clients give mm -hmm. you as feedback is everything. Like I wouldn't be doing the stuff that I'm doing if my mm -hmm. clients didn't rock with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? If they were dissing me, I wouldn't be doing it. If I wasn't fully booked every day, I wouldn't be like doing the stuff that I'm doing on social media. Yeah. And I feel like it's a blessing to be able to make content on the side, but at the same time still be busy as a barber. Yeah. So like whatever your feedback you're getting from your clients, that goes a long way. And like with skits I was able to do, it gives like entertainment. A lot of my clients would bring it up in the chair. Yeah. And then that's what gets the convo going. Like they would look at other videos ideas and then bring it up to me and say, hey, AJ, like you should do this. And then that's just, you're building that relationship. Yeah and they start to see you as someone that's trying to build up your own brand and your clients will respect that. I like that, that's a great answer, yeah. yeah. Through Google reviews, a lot of people yeah. think that's not a big part. Think about, Google is one of the biggest, most richest companies for a mm -hmm. reason. Like, they created a platform where you could give a business five stars, four stars, three stars, yeah. and if your name is on there just for a Dreezy five star review, 
and then they comment saying, yo, this guy gave me the sharpest lineup and the crispiest yeah, that, fades. You know, that goes a long way. That right? goes a long way because yeah. how many people type exactly. on Google best yeah. barbershop yeah. and then throw my come up and then they see like, Adriesy says sharpest lineup, this and that. Wow, mm -hmm. that sticks to people's head. Well, I want mm -hmm. a sharp ass lineup. I gotta go see Adriesy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and it's not just Instagram, right? Like it's, it's Google, man. Like Google, you gotta, yeah. It's Google, bro. And I just feel like every client, like you gotta put your heart into that haircut as yeah. cliche as it sounds like mm -hmm. you gotta go off because once they get out of that chair like it's everyone looking at that yeah. walking advertising and i that's feel like it, that's what i look at it as as like a walking ad Absolutely. and then once i started looking at that like that's mm -hmm. what made me so meticulous with my haircuts mm -hmm. attention to detail like everything i love that that's actually one of the biggest things too that i always say too yeah. every client that leaves out your shop is a walking billboard exactly yeah. advertising exactly, exactly what you're yeah. saying that's so what it is yeah. you definitely got like the right mindset, like you wouldn't mm -hmm. want to leave someone nah, messed course. up because that's a representation of your work, your own and your work, brand, exactly. and the shop. So yeah. that's important. You're yeah. right. Like how many times has like someone complimented your client and then they shouted, you know, shout out Francis. Exactly. See, it goes a long way. It's it not does. just barbers looking at your haircut. Mm -hmm. It's people on the train, people in public. Absolutely. So how do you handle new clients that want to be in your chair when you're completely slammed sometimes if someone's messaging you for the first time and maybe mm -hmm. on your dms and instagram and you know you're so busy but yeah. then as busy as you are you feel bad that damn i wish i could take this client well first things first i would i just wanted to say it, it's a blessing to be able to get those messages where mm -hmm. hey like i want to get a haircut from you yeah because starting up it, it wasn't like that Absolutely. So for someone that wants to get fit into your schedule, bro, it's a good feeling. Like it just shows you yeah. that they want your mm -hmm. work done. Like they want your value. Yeah. But what I would do in that situation, I would definitely try to accommodate them and try to fit them in. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to just rush them in, bang yeah. out their haircut. I wouldn't want to do that. But yeah. personally, being at the shop on mat, I would be generous enough to be like, hey, like you can book with my boy at the shop. And the next time I'm available, I'm gonna squeeze you in. I like that, yeah. And I just feel like that's what brings a good barbershop mm -hmm. environment where everyone's eating, everyone's like sharing. Yeah. And that's what, that's what brings like that's a positive about, atmosphere. Yeah. And I like that how yeah. you said it. It shows a very, you're very genuine and grateful for, you see the value because I could tell you started with nothing when you had, you have to grind your way to get clients that you still remember. And when you said you have to be happy and blessed that you have people messaging you still because you're right. A lot of until you're you're at that point where like you're busy and then you mm -hmm. have other people like overloading clients. That's a true blessing because exactly. sometimes when you started, you wish you were in that position. So yeah. it, it is a very it's a great thing to have in that mindset where you don't build ego. Um, you mm -hmm. build you're, you're blessed. You're, you're grateful. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to hone that in you to keep getting to the next level instead of thinking negative. Cause I, I get it, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Because I've seen it too with some barbers thinking they're like, they're the best and then yeah, it I gets in their man. head yeah. and then they just, they're like, yo, you think you can book with me bro? Book next month, like yeah, very yeah. disrespectful, yeah. right? Yeah. And we know, we've seen yeah, people, we see that, the yeah. industry is a very crazy. disrespectful thing, right? Yeah. To, to the clients who actually pay for our services. Yeah. They're the ones paying. The clients are, the people you should be taking exactly. care of. Exactly. You know? Who cares about the flashy shit? Exactly. Like we're it's in like, the service industry for exactly, a reason. Exactly, yeah. The client's always gonna be right. Absolutely. Maybe not all the time, but yeah. you know, like you gotta, yeah, yeah, you, gotta yeah. you gotta act sometimes. <laughs> for sure, man. Well, yeah. hey man, Dreezy, yeah. I just wanna thank you for mm -hmm. coming on this, yeah. tuning this podcast together. Mm -hmm. So I'm just really grateful that I got to sit with you and talk yeah, to you and get yeah. the experience firsthand in the chair. Yeah. You're a whole, livelihood and the skits, the comedy yeah. stuff, the barbering stuff. And I want to see you five years from now being very successful and mm -hmm. having your dream come true. Yeah, maybe, you keep working hard. Maybe, maybe two years. Hey, we'll come we'll soon, see. baby. Francis, thank, you, bro. Yeah, thank you, bro. Pleasure, bro. Cool. Nice to see you.